Tonight, I will regret writing a Top Gear style intro because I started a script in the style of Jeremy Clarkson before remembering what a cunt he is. Hello, hello, good evening, my name is Not Important. Welcome back to our regular segment, which we call Graphics Card in a reasonably priced gaming PC. You may well have heard of my next guest before, though you may have heard people say they're past their prime, that you can get better performance from newer graphics cards. In 2021 though, most people will take pretty much whatever GPU they can get their hands on, regardless of price. So please welcome our guest, the NVIDIA RTX 2060 Super. Now let's see how fast they go round our track. Oh god, no, I'm not recording it again. It's, it's staying in. My Tales, Tales from, from the, the Scalper, Scalper Pandemic, Pandemic series has largely focused on extending the life of older graphics cards in the context of a world where progress has been well and truly cock-blocked. A recent example of such blockery of cockery is Nvidia's RTX 3060, a truly appealing lower mid-range offering at £300 or $330, but which sold out so fast it may have broken Newton's second law. Like many of you, I've sort of subconsciously boycotted actual reviews of the RTX 3060 in the same way I would ignore a TripAdvisor review for Narnia. It doesn't exist, so what's the point in getting excited about it? Unlike the similarly performing RTX 3060, I was actually able to buy a B-grade RTX 2060 Super for close to the 3060's launch price from UK retailer Overclockers. If you can find a great deal on this card, or maybe you've got one already and were hoping to have upgraded by now, asking how it performs in the latest games might sound like something of a first world problem to a lot of people, but let me help you with that anyway, your highness. As is tradition for this series, rather than a rigorous scientific process using high performance PC parts to remove the influence of the processor and RAM from the equation, I shall instead be testing this card out on my signature reasonably priced gaming PC. A PC with this modest spec can be built for around about £300 these days, and also stands in for older quad-core Intel-based systems that people may well still be gaming on. God, this intro turned out longer than expected. Uh, better get on with it. Normally I'd record a section in Valorant, but as you might well have noticed from my previous videos, every card from the R9 270X upwards has essentially returned the same score, probably down to a CPU limitation, so for this higher spec GPU I tested out Apex Legends instead. With settings turned up to high, mainly so as not to encounter another CPU limit, Apex Legends turned out an average score of 114 and 1% 1 lows just under 70. Fortnite performs, predictably, ridiculously well on this card, even with a relatively budget CPU backing it up. Competitive settings result in a super high FPS experience, averaging over 200 and with 1% 1 lows of 150. At epic settings I saw an average of 120 with lows over 74. I also dicked around a bit with RTX and DLSS, the results of which are on screen now. Rocket League doesn't need this kind of performance. 248 average FPS in this game is really only good for bragging rights, and you certainly don't need to spend £300 on a GPU to enjoy the game. On the other hand, I scored a hat trick in this match, so I'm showing off because it's my video and I can do what I like. If you haven't heard of Valheim yet, it may surprise you to learn that, despite its Quake 2 level meshes and textures, this is one of the most demanding games of 2021. In its defence it is still in development, and although I'm no connoisseur of survival games, I'm enjoying it quite a lot, and at high settings with the various effects turned on it can look kinda pretty. As I made this video both MSI's Reaver Tuner and the game itself had just received updates, 
meaning I can now run the game in Vulkan and comfortably benchmark it, which returns an average frame rate of 77 with lows of 50. Uh, yes, it's still Assassin's Creed Valhalla's built-in benchmark. No, I still haven't started playing it yet. The RTX 2060 Super helps gain a score of 72 FPS average and 55 1% lows, which I think are pretty excellent results considering the reputation Ubisoft have earned for the quality of their ports. Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080 high settings doesn't pose much of a challenge here, turning in an average score of 92 FPS with 1% lows of 66. If you're looking for something for 1440 or 2160 gaming, I think with a few settings tweaks, the RTX 2060 Super could most likely achieve a good frame rate. The medium is proving tough to benchmark. Indoors, with the settings cranked, we can see 80 FPS in normal gameplay, only for it to drop into the 20s and 30s once the split screen comes into play. As this game supports Nvidia's DLSS tech, I think it's well worth taking advantage of it to help guarantee smooth gameplay, while keeping the game's visuals and atmosphere relatively intact. At 1080 high settings, the Forza Horizon 4 canned benchmark reports a GPU score of 158.1 average and 150.4 low, meaning that this is going to be a great option for high refresh rate gaming, potentially with a better CPU. This is a pretty respectable showing for Cyberpunk. On 1080 high settings, I saw averages of about 60 FPS with 1% lows hovering just above 30. Playing with ray tracing enabled is an option, but unless combined with DLSS in performance mode, you're going to have a pretty low frame rate. And the flip side of that is DLSS performance mode at 1080 looks pretty soft. After finally fixing this PC's issues with Warzone, apparently somehow the Windows page file ended up being assigned to the hard drive instead of the SSD, which was a pretty serious issue with only 8GB of physical RAM in the system, I finally got a great result from an Nvidia card. Taking advantage of the extra GPU horsepower, I turned the quality up to normal from low and still managed an average FPS over 100 and 1% lows in the 50s. In its day, and that really wasn't that long ago, the RTX 2060 Super wasn't a particularly exciting card, offering near RTX 2070 performance for a near RTX 2070 price. On the 2021 used market, however, it may have a little more appeal, especially if you can get one at a reasonable price. Technology like DLSS is likely to extend this car's usefulness for a good while to come, and if sanity ever returns to the market, one of these at a price of 200 to 250 pounds could well be the perfect heart of a future console killer build. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.